Welcome to TradersArmy.com, defending your right to build wealth and preserve capital for generations to come. What's up, everybody? It's Friday morning. Welcome to the Friday morning edition of the Daily Market Commentary. I'm your host, Chuck Fulkerson. We're going to do what we do each and every day. We're going to take a look at our futures market, same 10 to 12 futures markets. But a special thing today, we're actually going to uh, break down a stock trade. Uh, one of our uh, one of my uh, one of my friends uh, and members of Traders Army asked me to break down a stock trade, so I thought, you know what, let's do it on the DMC. So we're going to do a little bit of a stock trade today. So I may go a little bit faster in some of the futures markets. Now remember that it is Friday, and with Fridays lately, we've seen this potential for an end of the day sell off. So just be aware of a potential end of the day sell off today, as that's become quite commonplace. But taking a look at what we see in the S and P, we're up about seven points today after yesterday's huge rally. Um, we did rally up yesterday into our 15 minute supply. Now that 15 minute supply on the live trade room yesterday, we switched it um, from a limit entry to a confirmation entry. So no entry on that 15 minute supply for me. Um, but what we are doing this morning uh, is putting in a bit of uh, a, a bit of a triangle pattern which could lead to a breakout. So keep an eye on this. Uh, going going higher. Now we have this <clears throat> speed candle retracement down here and another opportunity somewhere up in here for both uh, potential retracements as price moves for today. I would like to see some basing before this. Obviously, if we, if we take some sort of a breakout on this uh, potential, this could always break out to the downside. And if it does, I'd be looking at this as a price target for today. Uh, the NASDAQ, same, uh, same basic price action, actually a little bit, little bit less bullish than the S&P, uh, where I don't have, whereas the S&P, it's a very clear um, triangle pattern. The, uh, the NASDAQ's triangle pattern is a little bit less defined. Um, oops, I zoomed in, didn't mean to zoom in there. NASDAQ's is a little bit, um, less defined as you can see that I don't have quite as strong uh, of a grade on my uh, on my lower highs right so I, I'm a higher lows so I still do have higher lows but the grade is significantly better on the s p uh, than it is uh, in that uh, in that Nasdaq trade now moving over to crude oil crude oil was really our best trade of the day yesterday uh, as we rallied into our supply level now notice, the strength at which crude oil rallied up into our level of supply. Uh, now that level of supply, I've, I've got to go back a little bit to be able to see that a little bit more clearly. Um, that supply level was found from this huge uh, move down, this big speed candle move down. And one of the things that we say about speed candles is that, is that they tend to get retraced. So price came in and gave us a very quick touch and go entry. Um, on this level. So leave me a comment down below if you're able to catch this level. This one uh, worked out exactly like we would hope it to. Uh, very nice strong move away. And now we're coming down into an area where we had a fair amount of wick over wick price action. Um, I look at wick over wick price action as potential reversal points. Now this one specifically I'm looking at primarily because of the fact that it was an old area of resistance through here. So keep an eye on this one as, as price is returning back into this level. Um, if you go down to a 15 minute chart on this, if that level's a bit too wide for you and you slide to the 15 minute level, uh, and actually I'm gonna do that here. I'm gonna reduce this risk just a smidge by taking it down to here um, as, a, uh, as a potential for a reversal. So now if you wanna keep the zone a bit wider then certainly you may get it now on the 15 I'd have to take this as my first profit target and the reason I went to the 15 was because on the hourly chart I saw this opposing wick over wick area right here which made me think you know I should probably go to a smaller time frame to reduce my overall exposure since my my risk has a has a or my reward has a chance of being limited um, Gold. Now, gold yesterday, uh, we had a stop out on a demand level that I kind of felt was a decent little spot. It was right around a, a pretty good gold reversal time of day. Uh, small stop out on here. However, it was more than made up for with the rally off of the next area of demand. So uh, this one, unfortunately, did not work. One of the, uh, you know, one of the members in the in the trade room yesterday called this area right here essentially to the tick uh, just 
uh, just really looking at at this area here to the left as well as some of this area over here really a nice trade on the move down it did however blow through the demand came down to the to our second demand got a nice little rally up out of it and the trade updates we moved our stop locked in some profit took a little bit of money off the table so now I need to remove this level uh, we've got one more 15 minute level of demand down here that uh, that may become valid um, but I am going to wrap my lines around this area up here for a potential trade in the future. Uh, looking ahead to some of our bonds and currency markets, uh, we had taken a look at some of these levels yesterday. Uh, and yesterday we had talked about the Aussie as a potential breakout. And it was just kind of chopping around. We did get a little bit of a breakout. It didn't actually wind up stopping out. Eventually we did get... Uh, a little bit more of a breakout although if you took the six candle rule then you're then you're out for a, uh, a small loss on that position uh, the ZN which is our 10-year Treasury note um, we had a uh, we had a confirmation long in this trade so price came into the level and here's your entry as it comes out one two three four five six candles later price had gone nowhere so uh, do me a favor leave me in the comment section down below what does that mean what does the six candle rule mean and how do we follow it uh, I'd love to get get you guys' feedback in there. I, I, uh, I, I think that uh, I talk about these things, but I don't always know that everybody understands them. So leave me a comment down below. What is the six candle rule and how uh, and, and what did it do for us on this particular trade? Looking at our wick over wick levels, got a little area here that could become a uh, an important spot in a reversal. In the Aussie, oh, I just talked about the Aussie. Let's move to the Euro. Uh, in the Euro, no real movement off of the level I spoke about yesterday, which was this move higher. Uh, so still kind of waiting for price to get into there. Canadian dollar, uh, we had this little bit of a reversal trade. Price came back into our Canadian dollar, and we got a really nice pop out of this one. Uh, if you did take this one, you should probably have taken your money off the table at the opposing supply level, which was right here. So that worked for a nice three to one uh, reward to risk. So I'm going to pull this one off. Um, I am going to be aware of a potential breakdown below this area now. Since we stayed in there for a little bit now, I still need to see some basing in front of it. But that is a, uh, that's an ongoing uh, potential. Uh, it's taking a look at our pound and yen positions. So looking here at, uh, at the Japanese yen, you know, we are flattening out a little bit here. Uh, this typically sets up for a breakdown uh, when we see price flattening out like this. So keep an eye on that for a potential breakdown. And then the Great British Pound for a potential reversal off of this area somewhere in here. Uh, real quick, I said I was going to analyze a stock. So we're going to analyze a stock from an options perspective. Uh, one of our members had asked specifically about uh, a stock. And this is something that we talk a lot about at Trader's Army is, is how, to, how do I use options to enhance the probability in my account. So we actually have an options class starting next week. If that's something that interests you, go to tradersarmy.com uh, and look into our options class, which starts next week. But let's go to Starbucks, which is the stock we're looking at for today. Uh, and the particular trade that, uh, that he was considering is called an iron condor. And an iron condor is a trade that benefits from a range-bound stock. Now, uh, this stock has essentially been range bound between 99 and 93 for quite a while. So let's look and see if we can get any credit uh, for what is known as an iron condor, which is trading between a particular range. So uh, when I go into Starbucks and I look at, at what is called the risk graph, uh, I, will, uh, I will take a look at, at Starbucks. Uh, from the perspective of the options chain and what the options chain is going to tell me. So I've got all of these different ones available. Let's go to the one that expires in two weeks, 14 day options position. Now in this 14 day options position, uh, we're going to look to see what does it look like to sell the $100 uh, options uh, and buy the 105. Now I don't know that we'll get much credit for that. So we're going to sell a vertical spread, which is the 100 by 105 uh, bear call spread now that nets about a 19 cent credit uh, and then the 90 by 95 bull put spread now when you combine a bear uh, a, a, a bull put spread with a bear call spread that gives you essentially the setup for an iron condor so we're going to do the 90 by 85 bull put spread so the trade sets up 
for a 19 cent credit on each of the wings, which is a total of a 38 cent credit. Now I've got a $5 spread above current price and a $5 spread below current price. So all that gets, you know, it's, it's impossible, it's mathematically impossible for price to expire both above and below. So the broker dealer typically will only tie up one wing, if you will, one spread. So it's a $5 spread that's netting about a 38 cent credit. So what does that mean as far as a uh, return on investment? Well, if you've got a 38 cent credit, which is, you know, you're gonna, you may get a little bit of a spread. This one takes the mid price, but let's, take, let's say you take a 38 cent credit. So the way you calculate that is you take the spread of five minus the 38 cent credit that you're receiving. In this case, it's $4.62. Now, um, that 38 cent credit divided by the $4.62 cost basis essentially gives me my rate of return before commissions are factored in, which is about 8.2%, all right, T times 100, you have, and you're at your, there's your percentage for those of you that don't like to, to do the math, 8.2%. Now, that's before commissions, obviously, you have to factor out commissions in, in, in what your trade would be, but what's the exposure? Well, the exposure is the, the, the difference between my spread. So I take a little bit more exposure but now it gives me the area as long as price stays between those levels. So my, my break even uh, on, on a particular date, in this case, which would be my expiration dates, my break, my break evens are 100.39 and 89.63. So looking at this, as long as the stock stays below here and above here, I'm going to get essentially a pretty de uh, I'm going to get that 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 rate of return. Um, now, if I want a greater rate of return, I'd have to what's called shrink the wings or get the wings closer together and I might change my my trade. So instead of doing the 100 by 105, I might do the 99s by 104s. Right? And then instead of doing the 90 by 85s, I can do the 91s by 86s. There's still $5 spreads, but now my credit has moved from 38 cents total to 59 cents total, right? So essentially I've gotten 20 cents more of of uh, of profit, but notice my break even has also shifted. My break evens are now uh, going to be instead of 89.63, I've got a break even that moves uh, to let me set my slices to break even so I can give you the exact number. That slices to break even on that date, 90.41 and 99.60. So looking at the chart, my break evens would now be here, roughly here and here, right? So I've I've given myself a little bit more area to be wrong. Uh, excuse me. To I've given myself a little bit more limited of an area in which I can be right but I've also increased my rate of return. So this is really where the balance between probability and rate of return comes in. So if you want, you know, if you're okay with an 8% rate of return in just a few days, you can take that slightly wider area. Um, if you want something that's a little bit tighter, you can narrow it in. You're gonna get a slightly better credit. Now, mathematically, with a slightly better credit, you take a slightly lower risk, but you also have lower probability. Risk and probability are not the same thing. So uh, if you've got any questions on that or how options work, please uh, feel free to go to tradersarmy.com. We've, uh, we've got a lot of free content on how options work, and there certainly uh, is an opportunity to, uh, to come on board with us as a member. And we do options trades every single week, especially with, a, uh, with our options trade worksheets. So if you have any questions, please shoot us an email, support at tradersarmy.com. I hope you guys have a great weekend, and I will see you soon. Later.